This is Joe. He received his MS from the department in 1971, and he's here to talk about, um, I, I think, some of the potential problems with uh, driverless cars, um, driver connectivity. We, um, he is uh, the author of a textbook on computer techniques in neuroanatomy, and he has also served, served for eight years on the Chapel Hill Town Council. So to give some context, to uh, the sort of public service orientation of his talk and his research interests. So I'll just hand it over to Joe, and uh, I hope that you'll <laughs> all feel free to give him plenty of feedback, ask questions, make a lot of comments afterwards. Thank you very much, and enjoy. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank the computer, congratulate the computer science department on 50 years. I hope there'll be another 50. Um, and thank, very, thank you all very much for coming. This is a golden opportunity for me because you are a technical computer science audience and I, this is the first time I've ever given this talk about distracted driving to a group like you and I really would love your feedback when we're done. <coughs> is there anyone here who has worked on the computer systems that are in front of drivers? Yes, I particularly will uh, uh, solicit your feedback when we're done. Okay? And I will speak for 15 minutes. <coughs> this is a big deal. Here's why. Lots of people killed, lots of people injured. Um, and it's going, these are the 2013 numbers. The 2014 numbers are not yet out, but they'll certainly be higher. <coughs> Two minutes of personal history. I live on Coolidge Street in Chapel Hill, a tiny residential street a half mile south of the hospitals. And I witnessed an accident where a driver drove her car straight into Krista Slough. The driver was also a UNC student. And what happened was phenomenal. She drove her car straight into Krista without slowing down, without stepping on the brake, without making any attempt to swerve to avoid her, even though the visual weather uh, the visual conditions and the weather conditions and the traffic conditions were ideal, okay? Krista suffered, how Krista, I watched Krista get knocked 18 feet into a ditch. How she broke no bones, I will never understand, but she suffered brain hemorrhages, which started a two-year very painful rehab. Turns out that about that time, the North Carolina legislature had two bills in, that they were considering which would ban the use of handheld cell phones in North Carolina, and we and a number of people testified against or in favor of the ban. Um, and then we listened to the legislators, and to a person they said, we don't want this. We want to use our phones, and we're safe drivers. As long as we keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the steering wheel, we are safe. Failing at the state level, we asked the Chapel Hill Town Council to pass a ban, and scientifically, the only kind of ban would be a complete ban, handheld and hands-free, and it worked. The Town Council passed it, a first-in-the-nation ban on cell phone driving in Chapel Hill. Unfortunately, the North Carolina Supreme Court uh, uh, overruled it in 2014, but they did not rule on the safety, they ruled on the process. They said only the state can regulate personal electronic devices by drivers, not local governments. So they made cell phone driving legal in Chapel Hill. They did not make it safe. Science is not on the legislators, uh, legislators' radar screens. What is on the legislators' radar screen are con uh, contributions from the North Carolina Association of Automobile Dealerships and CTIA, which is a lobbying group for the telecom companies. So, nowhere. Now, let's go to science for a minute. This is a graph from the UNC Highway Safety Research Center, but it is confirmed by um, many other highway safety research centers. It is not cherry-picked data. First, it, it is a graph of risk as a function of behavior behind the wheel. Texting is off the charts stupid. According to Arthur Goodwin, who is one of the two distracted driving experts at the Highway Safety Research Center, if you text while you drive, you're playing Russian roulette with your, with your life. Okay? But let's focus on the three bars. 
uh, that are about the same height. Handheld phone use, hands-free phone use, and drunk driving at a 0.10 level. They're all the same. If you are talking on a phone, you're a drunk driver, based on both accident statistics and neuroscience studies. And there's no cherry-picked data here. This is sound science now. The big take-home message is no gain in safety with hands-free technology. A driver talking hands-free drives like a drunk. Now, why? Inattention, this is the best functional definition I've ever seen of a phenomenon called inattention blindness. Driving a car is a very demanding visual task. You bump up against the bandwidth of your brain. If you add a phone call, something has to give, and what gives is vision. Okay? And by the way, the quality of the phone call goes down too. That's been studied. Businessmen who make decisions while they talk on the phone while they're driving make bad decisions. Okay? But that's not the function of this talk. So um, what is this explains, and this explains why Krista was hit and why the driver didn't see Krista, though she was healthy and though uh, conditions were absolutely perfect. It's very hard to convince someone that his vision is reduced because he sincerely thinks that he sees everything. I hate to sound like Donald Rumsfeld, but you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> okay. The car companies are selling technology for hands-free voice control. And it is based on a completely false premise. Even if the interface, whoops, something's missing here. Hang on. Ah, three types of driver distraction: manual, visual, cognitive. And the big one is cognitive. It doesn't matter about your hands. It doesn't matter about your eyes. The car companies have a false premise. They're trying to make you believe that if you talk hands-free, you're a safe driver. No, sir. No, ma'am. You're not. Even if the interface, such as Siri, were flawless, it only reduces the manual and the visual distraction. It does not touch the cognitive distraction. So let's start with the, let, let's start with the uh, car company's actions now. I this is a BMW ad, of course. Um, Drive down the road, run all these apps, you're fine. <laughs> I love this one. The special equipment option of connected drive services opens up the world of social networks to you so you won't miss anything. Do your Facebook, Facebook post while you're driving. What's going on here? This is, um, obviously this is anecdotal, but it sure is relevant. High Point, North Carolina. A Ford ad. Your apps are listening. Questions from the Ford ad. A voice. Quotes from the Ford ad. Your apps are a voice command away. Hands free, voice activated again. Chevrolet, the same thing. There's the computer screen. Now, <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer. Nikola Tesla has been one of my heroes for a long time. I even went to Belgrade to his museum. I have an electric truck, and I've been driving it in Chapel Hill for 15 years, so I was delighted when the Tesla company came out with a series of electric cars. <coughs> well, now I'm not so happy with them. <coughs> Let's play a, a two-minute uh, video clip and I would like to, you to imagine doing what's on this clip at 70 miles an hour out on I-40 in heavy traffic. See so if I can click that and it should start. Accelerate.
ways to help understand and maximize energy efficiency for the last 5, 15, or 30 miles. And don't forget, with internet connectivity, Model S has all the benefits of a full web browser. <laughs> screen functions such as navigation, mobile devices, media controls, and more. Utilizing the instrument cluster along with the touchscreen offers drivers the opportunity to access up to four apps at a time. With the ability to activate most touchscreen functions through a series of controls, you can stay connected while keeping focus on the road ahead. With these and many more functions, Right at your fingertips, the 17 inch touchscreen display is a breakthrough in automotive engineering and just another example of how Tesla is bringing you the car of the future today. When I, when I first saw that video clip, I laughed. I thought, Tesla just wrote my speech for me. <laughs> now, by and large, the car companies have not done a good job with their human interface. So they're turning to Google, Android, and Apple for an, a better interface. And one of the Android product is called Android Auto, and Apple is, is called Apple CarPlay. Here's a two-minute clip on, on Android Auto. Paul Gilster writes the technology column for the News and Observer. Social media in a vehicle is a recipe for disaster. Uh, Robert Rosenberger is a professor of public policy at Georgia Tech. He writes this article in the CACM. His main thesis is that legislators ignore the science and promote the safety of hands-free use. Now, I think this thing will track like cigarettes and cancer. We're in North Carolina. Tobacco used to be king here. The car companies are knowingly selling a lethal product. Uh, the, companies, the car companies will fight government regulation until the science overwhelms them. Remember this? Seven cigarette CEOs testifying under oath in Washington that nicotine is not addictive. The, CE, the science did overwhelm them. 
What were the U.S. government results? An education campaign, lots of laws, lots of nuisance uh, uh, rules, but smoking went down, though it's still legal. Okay. Now, this is what I predict <laughs> will happen. Okay. All right. Localizing it now. Fred Brooks has said for 50 years computer applications should be need pulled, not technology pushed. In other words, because you can do it, you shouldn't. Doesn't mean you should do it. And I would add that they should also not be marketing pushed. Just because you can sell it does not mean you should do it. Okay, I am finished. I would love to hear. I would love to hear your opinions of all this. Are they, are they backfilling some of the dangers? No. I mean, obviously, it's better not to have a si an accident with the person on your left. But the, I guess the only way I can answer it is the, the accident statistics still show that you're a drunk when you're on a cell phone. Sandy, good to see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> but anyway, my question is um, a serious one, actually. Um, given uh, yours and mine opposition to texting and driving and stuff like that, and given Dr. Brooks's well-intentioned and well-founded feeling that we should not um, invent things that, or should not market things that are bad, how do you justify? How can we all justify that in view of the free enterprise system that, that pursues profit? Sandy, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, obviously, we're in the United States, and, and we do have a free enterprise system. If we, were in China, if we were in China, we would have the same okay. problem of greed and, you know. Okay, go back, go back, go back to cigarettes. Yeah. Do you disagree that cigarettes are dangerous? I don't want to get into a debate. <laughs> okay, no, but, but, but yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, and so, y y I guess, one way to look at it is, okay, go ahead and sell the product, but advertise like crazy how dangerous it is. Right, right. Same as cigarettes. Right. Uh, um, uh, over here. What scares me in particular about, about this and the, the uh, applications of the cars is it's not like um, cigarettes where you can finish a pack and then theoretically quit. These are being built into, into vehicles that people are going to use for, in my case, 10 years before I get a new car, they're going to be around. And even if, even if tomorrow the government and public relations firm says, you must not do this stuff in a car, it'll kill you, it's going to be right there in front of people. Absolutely correct. I'm scared. Right. Okay. In the back. Oh, uh, I was going to say. Uh, is that Josh? Not yet, it is. How are you? <laughs> Okay. Um, here. So, um, I think you had a line on this very, very quickly, but I just want to make sure I understand. So the data that you showed, if you're talking hands-free over the phone, it's, it's the same as when driving in terms of accident rate. That's right. If you're talking to somebody who's, who's right next to you, having a conversation, even the same conversation, it actually goes down. That's correct. That's because of what? Because of shared context? Yes, or exactly. Or the, okay. the passenger participates in the driving, and he knows when to be quiet and actually helps. Uh, helps the driver. Because the cognitive load should be, uh, the cognitive distraction of the driver should be about the same if you're having the conversation, right? But the, the fact that you have a, a co-pilot mm -hmm. is, is what saves you? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the passenger participates. Much simpler. Mm -hmm. Talking to 
question. Talk to somebody is way simpler than twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah. User interface is way simpler. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, what do you insurance companies think about this? I mean, some people do buy their car based on how expensive their insurance is going to be. Yeah. Watergate taught us to follow the money, right? Who wins? Car companies and telecom companies. Who loses? Insurance companies. They got to pay the claims, but the insurance companies. Well, okay. But the insurance companies are getting involved in this now because they want, they are promoting a thing called the connected car. Every car will be attached to the cell phone towers, and their primary goal is to get driving information so y they could see whether a person is an aggressive driver and charge them more rates. Also, they can rent them a little box that does all this. But they then go further and say, use it to make a phone call. So don't know yet the answer. So Please. 75, 80 years ago, a lot of states put laws on the books banning um, the use of radios in cars. Okay. Now it's like radios needed like the Dusty speed dials at once and then it's this little antenna and so forth. And I can imagine someone doing that years and years ago. Um, do you think that radios should still be banned in cars? I, I've never said that radio should be banned in cars. A lot of, a lot of people did 75 or 80 years ago. I mean, it seems like technology advanced to the point okay. where I think most people feel pretty comfortable using radios in cars. Okay. I mean, I'm glad you're talking to us as computer scientists because I think a lot of these issues can be, can be addressed by better technology in cars. Well, obviously, it's better to keep your eyes on the road and to keep your hands on the wheel. But that doesn't make you safe. And the limitation in the human brain is the big issue. And if you have a way to rewire the human brain, please come talk to us. Um, now, and listening to the radio is a much less complex task. It, uh, the neuroscience studies show that, and the accident studies. It's not one of the... Uh, uh, causes of accidents. Erwin? How many generations do you think will pass before we have a driverless car where you remove the human being entirely? Okay. I don't know the answer to that, but the last national meeting I went to addressed the issue. Won't the solution for all of this be a driverless car? And the lawyers stood up and they said, okay, okay, Google sells a driverless car, Erwin, you buy it. Okay? And you get killed. Whom does your family sue? Who is responsible? And that issue has not been settled. So maybe the driverless cars will become technically feasible and work, but they may not be sold for legal reasons. I, jury's still out, bad pun. Okay? Okay. Go ahead. One solution might be to prevent many of these features from operating as cars that are moving. In fact, my system works that way currently. Uh, could you not, with people who are going to act with this, at least try to get that feature allowed to be user activated and make sure that it can't be used if the car is moving? Is it already used in some of those things out of cars like that? Yeah. Uh, th there's a lot of inconsistencies of, across the systems of what can be done when a car is moving. Some of the car manufacturers are pretty strict. Some are absolutely liberal. It doesn't change something, though. There's a shot of dopamine, a pleasure, a, a, a pleasure chemical that goes into your brain when that phone rings. And there's an even greater one that goes into the phone when you do a post that says, hey, I had a tuna fish salad sandwich for lunch. <laughs> OK? Um, so it's very hard for someone to say, don't call me when I'm driving or when the phone rings to not answer it. Okay. Any, any, ideas, uh, any ideas on how to solve this problem from the comp side people? Yes. Um, 
Uh, that c there's no technical limitation on that. Okay, I but think that, that could be an option that right. would automatically once you speak to your, you know, your phone from your car, you won't be able to answer the phone call, and then you can be able to get the message or whatever. Okay, L do I have time for? I want to ask one specific question. This is the computer science community. We're teaching the people in CompSci how to do this stuff. Should we be teaching its dangers? If we were teaching, if we were promoting students of chemical engineering, would we say to them, hey, don't go to work for R.J. Reynolds? Okay, what's the ethics here? Sandy? Well, this is kind of a diversion, but I have four words for people who are stupid and drive cars. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> okay. I, t I teach a course on undergraduate course in computers and society, including a, including a unit on ethics. So I firmly believe that engineers have to take responsibility for what their products do. So I teach okay. that to my students. Okay. Well, we need to move on. We are out of time. But if we do have